Welcome to FBLA PBL's webinar entitled PBL Get Ready to Compete. Barbara Small, Education Director, will be reviewing the new events as well as giving some tips for winning. My name is Bo Cobb and I serve as PBL's National Secretary. I will be serving as a moderator this afternoon. We encourage you to submit your questions at any time during this broadcast using the GoToWebinar toolbar at the top right of your screen. We will go over questions at the end of this presentation. Just as a reminder, we will be recording this webinar and it will be available for download on our YouTube channel tomorrow. And don't forget to update your social media status to let everyone know that you're taking part in today's webinar. Now please welcome Barbara Small. Again, I'd like to welcome all PBL members and advisors. Are you ready to compete? Your state conference is fast approaching. Have you paid your state and national dues? Have you reviewed your event guidelines? You're going to learn all about this during this webinar. When preparing for competition, it is imperative that you make sure you follow your state guidelines first. They may differ slightly from the national guidelines. Of course, once you win, then you'll want to review the national guidelines. Today, I will be talking pretty much about the national guidelines. Don't forget, dues deadline is April 15th for PBL members in order to be eligible to compete. So if you haven't paid, get your money in immediately. This year, we have several new national events. Again, check with your state to see whether they're offering them. We have three for just what I call the multiple choice objective tests, one in entrepreneurship concepts, personal finance, and organizational behavior and leadership. Another one in the finance arena is cost accounting, which is a production test and, again, an objective test on site. An exciting one going into more of the social media and what's happening is, a mo is our mobile app development. And you are creating an app. It is, the again, the topics in, found in the your chapter management handbook guidelines. Um, there's a pre-judge component that's due to us uh, May 9th, and then the team or individual or team will, per, will present that on site. Another performance event that will be presented on site is a business sustainability. Again, all the guidelines can be found in the national handbook. We also have modified a few events this year. One which many of you are doing right now and asking a lot of questions is our desktop publishing. The topic or projects in the book. You've had all the year to work on it and you will submit it to your state for pre-judging, and then you should be taking probably at your state an online test or an objective test. Business law now we have made into a two-parter. It could be a one to three member team, a collaborative test on site at national, but also it's a role play. So at the national level or even state level, um, you need to check to see whether you have a role play component at your state level. But for the national level, the top 15 scoring teams will advance to the role play. Community service project, we reduced it to 15 pages, and we retired several events, as you can see. Let's talk about, we have talked about events, but what really should you study? The one question I always ask, get is, what should I be studying? Well, for the ones that haven't found it yet, we have online, the PBL Competitive Events Online Reference Guide. If you just go onto our website, and click on PBL and Competitive Events, you're going to see this link. It has a tremendous amount of information, which I'll share with you in the next slide. You also have a PBL Competitive Events Study Guide. Now, we do these every three years, so it doesn't have all the new events in it. We've tried to help a little bit, but it doesn't have all the new events. We'll be doing a new one that will be on sale starting this summer. Of course, internet searches for questions, variety of textbooks. Also, have you find other people that may have taken the test your event you're in in your PBL chapter and ask them. When we're talking about our objective test a little bit, let's talk about what we call the online objective test. Now, at the national level, you will be using a computer to take your 100 question multiple choice test. You know, networking concepts, hospitality. You also will be doing what we call the collaborative test, like, for example, hospitality management is a one to three member team. So if there's two or three of you at the national level, you'll be sharing one computer and taking the test. And like I said, the top 15 then teams advance to the finals. But 
Remember I was mentioning about the online reference guide. I want to show you an example of what you're going to find on it and how important it is for you to do. What we're going to see now is um, what we call the competencies task for accounting principles. I'm waiting for the slide to change, and we'll see it in a minute. But the online reference guide will show you several things. Number one, it gives you a few sample questions. Um, it will give you, if it's a case event, will give you a case, a sample case. And we also have some videos for you to review of people presenting the cases. And we've tried to give as much as we can um, other links. But the one thing, if you're especially taking a written test, is if you look under the performance indicators there, we use the jargon in the um, uh, educational jargon, competencies and tasks. This is what we send out to the test writers. In other words, one of the parts of accounting principles is accounts payable and receivable. Well, that's such a broad topic. What are the things that you should know about it? And that's what we call tasks. So if you're studying for an objective test, you need to go onto the website. You need to go to that reference page under performance indicators, and that will tell you a lot more about the types of questions that you will see on your objective test. Now, let's talk about a few more test taking tools, or tips, I should say. All of you are so used to using the internet and Google searches. Now, keep in mind, if when you're taking a test on site, if we see you going out to Google, you will be disqualified. But Google searches are invaluable for looking for information. Um, for example, we just Google test taking tips. So here are some test taking tips that give you some, you know, some things when you're taking a multiple choice test. What should you look for? For example, read the question before you look at the answer. Eliminate answers you know aren't correct. Normally, on a multiple choice test, you always have a couple answers you know are not correct. Read all of your choices before choosing an answer. Believe it or not, usually the first choice you t pick is the correct one. Don't second guess yourself. A positive choice is more likely to be true than a negative one. And often, the, the question or the, the distractor that has the most information is usually the correct information. And of course, remember, and when you're taking any type of performance events or, or testing events, always arrive a few minutes early, make sure you know where everything is, but also dress code. Make sure you are appropriately dressed before you enter so you don't lose points or get disqualified. Another portion for you are interview events. For PBL, you actually have three interview events, one called job interview. Now, interview events are fun to do and prepare you for your future jobs. A couple things you have to know about, though, is that you have to pre-submit to us at the national level once you win your state, um, your six copies of a resume, your cover letter, and job application. And you're going to check with your state uh, advisor to find out how you're going to get them to us. But for the job interview, you are applying for a business or a business-related job of a company of your choice. So you need to research out a company and apply for a job that you're actually qualified for. If you're graduating, obviously this is a perfect example for you, but even for an underclassman, look at what your skill level is and then you're going to create your job title, but you are going to apply to a real company or pretend you're applying to a real company. And make every effort when you're looking at a company. If the judge asks you, well, what type of company is this, you need to be able to tell them. The other two interview events are the future business executive and future business educator. Again, you still need to send your resume and cover letters in. But for your future business executive, make sure you highlight your leadership involvement, especially with the PBL. That's, that needs to be really brought out before your job experience. For your future business educator, it's a two-parter. The first interview, and at national level, you're going to be interviewed twice. You'll be interviewed what we call the preliminary and the finals, um, depending on the number of people we have. But day, the preliminary round, you're, you are just going to be asked interview questions about teaching. But then you also have to present a uh, synopsis of your lesson plan on day two, and there will be equipment that we offer you at the national level. Again, check with the state to see what they will do at your state level. Several, you can tell I love interview events. A couple other um, tips for preparing for interview events. Again, you can research out. You can Google out and find all these sample questions you want to. Look at some of the questions that are out there. So this is also helpful when you're really going out for an interview. All interview material should be error-free. 
we're in the midst of interviewing clients uh, for a position here in the office, and we're finding errors on it, resumes. We're not even looking at them anymore. Practice your handshake. You don't want to have a weak handshake. You don't want to have too strong handshake. But practice your handshake and always make eye contact. You should always, always practice mock interviews with other colleagues, with people, your teachers. It could be the business and industry that have you working. It's important. And prepare some questions to ask at the end of the interview, but do not ask about salary. You don't do that. One next part of our competitive events is reports. And this year, uh, PBL only has actually three reports to do. You have a community service project, you have your local chapter uh, annual business report, and then you have your small business management plan. So your community service, as I said, is, number of pa is only 15 pages now. Your local chapter still can be 30, and your business plan can still be up to 30. But the one we're looking for, and you're going to be submitting all of those in a PDF online to your states. Um, we'll be that's how we're going to be evaluating. So you don't have to put a lot of pictures in there. Uh, we have to be able to pull them up. But just make sure you, on your report cover, on the first page, that all the information is correct, because you will lose points. Now, one of the major, major types of events we have are what we call the performance events. And we have two types. We have the collaborative tests, which I mentioned before. For example, hospitality management, human resource management. Um, you have network design. Now a new one is business law is now a new uh, a team event. One to three member team for most of them. You take that written test for first, and then the top 15 at the national level move on to an role play event uh, with judges. And when I say a role play event, this is really important because what happens there is you're going to be interacting with the judges. The judges are going to play a role. They could be the customer. Uh, they could be not happy with you, whatever it is going to be. So it's going to be a give and take for like seven minutes. So make sure you have to really interact with the judges. Make sure you designate a leader of the group. All, everyone has to participate, but make sure you do teamwork and participate as a group. Like I said, for the team events, you usually will have 20 minutes to look over your case study, your role play, and then you have seven minutes to present. Now, for just the basic performance event, such as in our speaking events, we have public speaking and impromptu speaking. Public speaking is a five-minute prepared topic. Impromptu speaking is a four-minute, but you're given a prompt and have 10 minutes to look it over, and it's in, you know, think of extra, uh, extemporaneous speaking. You have four minutes. You are penalized 30 seconds under or over. So for public speaking, please don't read from your notes. You can bring all the notes and you want. You should know it, hand gestures. Um, you're going to present. You may or may not have a podium. But you're always going to tie it back to your FBLA PBL goals. Again, eye contact and hand gestures are real important when you're talking about public speaking. Other types of performance events, which would be your business presentation, or um, I'm trying to think. I think a business presentation right off the top of my head. You're going to, you know, pre present or sales presentation. You're presenting to the judges. You know what you're doing, but be careful when you're doing perfor uh, your performance event tips. Make sure you introduce yourself to your school and your state, so the judges know who you are. They want you want to make sure they don't mix you up with someone else. This is very important. We provide projectors for you. If using equipment, a lot of times your equipment's going to fail. You need to make sure you're prepared to present even if your equipment fails. One of it is, let's say your projector doesn't work. You might want to turn around your laptop and show it to the judges. Or you have to be able to talk off the cuff if you're using it. Make sure, again, I was talking about before, make sure everyone participates. If it's a team event, the good eye contact and looking confident. Make sure you walk in, you're well-dressed, you're looking confident, and you look at the judges and that, you give a good hand shape, and you'll be in good shape. Vary your voice quality. You don't want to monotone. Make it look like you're happy. Please, you know, that helps. And stay within your time limit, because many of the events you will be penalized uh, for going over the time. Now, you've gone through the events. Now, competition day. I'm giving you a little background. So what to expect? You've studied. Now the big day has arrived. Just a few final tips. First of all, eat something in the morning. If you're an AM event, because our events will start, um, if you're in a performance event, our events start at 8 o'clock in the morning. So make sure you have something 
so that you're not going to faint on us or feel hungry. Um, and it also gives you energy. I mentioned dress appropriately. FBLA PBL has a dress code. If you have to ask, am I properly dressed, that answer is no. Gentlemen, it's so easy. You must have a tie, uh, dress pants, shoes, socks on. Um, code is not required, but it, I would recommend that you use it. You're talking to business people. They're going to be looking for it. Ladies, be careful what you wear. Not too short of a skirt. Forget the spandex, not the um, uh, flip-flop shoes. Be very careful. You're going, think of going for IBM, the old IBM that used to be white collar tie and you had to dress up. Think of going for an interview like that. Show up early. Uh, make sure you know where you're going. Um, every hotel is a little different, so check it out before you do. Please check your schedule. At the national thing, the schedules will be posted beforehand. But in case there's a change, we'll be posting them on site. Um, if you don't show up on site, guess what? You'll be disqualified. You have to be there on time. Otherwise, we can't wait for you. Now, I think we're going back to Bo for a few minutes. Bo, we can't hear you. You're not on. Thank you so much, Ms. Small. So we've had a number of questions submitted throughout the presentation, throughout the presentation and we'd like to get started on those now. If we run out of time, we will email you individually to answer those questions. But now to start with our questions. The first question is from Darlene in Iowa. She wants to know, when does she need to have her national dues paid in order to compete at the PBL National Leadership Conference? And remember, I talked about that at the beginning. Everything has to be received by us by April 15th. And you should have paid dues by now. So if you haven't paid your dues and you're competing at your state, you need to get those state and national dues in ASAP. And you can go online and pay and charge them. Sounds good. Oh, Make sure to go out there okay. and pay your dues, everybody. So Drew, so Drew from Wisconsin wants to know, how many competitive events can he enter at the national level? That's a great question. Again, at your state, you might be able to do three, four, or five. At the national competition, all PBL members may enter any two events. Team events, online events, mix and match, it doesn't make any difference. So you are allowed to enter two events at the national level. All right. So Susan from Arkansas is preparing for a future business executive event and would like to have some tips on preparing her resume for this competition. Any tips for her, Barb? Well, one of the things, I mentioned something about you need to highlight your leadership experiences first because as an executive, they're going to be looking at the, look at your rating sheet, again, on, on the website or in your handbook, you're going to see a rating sheet. That, look that over and that's what the judges are going to be used to score you. But uh, make sure you look at, obviously, your education. You're going to highlight your leadership skills. And then, obviously, you're going to also put in your work skills. You don't need to put references. That's not necessary. But think about the job you're applying for, and you want to make sure that you cover those skills within your resume and in your cover letter. Cover letter, make sure there's no errors. That's all I can tell you. If there's a typo, make sure it's formatted correctly. Have someone else look it over and help you. One of your advisors can help you. Another um, great thing just to mention that members can do is a lot of universities have a career service center that they can go to and they can actually have them review their resumes. I know that at a lot of the universities I've been to so far that they have. Um, and then also it's not a bad idea to go out there and actually set up like a mock interview or ask, it, or ask one of your future employers or future people you're um, interviewing with to look over your resume just to give you some tips. It's a great way to get your name out there and it's also a great way to get some feedback for your resume. Um, so Marissa from Florida wants to know where can she find the topics for business ethics and future business educator? Well, I keep talking about the chapter management handbook and guidelines and it's amazing how I know that we haven't, uh, that some of you have never seen it. Many times you don't you don't have the hands off. You can go online, go to our website at flapbl.org or hyphen pbl.org, click on PBL at the top, click on competitive events, and you're going to see your guidelines. Within your guidelines are all the pre topics that you have to prepare all year for business ethics, for website development, for mobile app, 
um, you know, for all for your business presentation. All those types, those topics change every year. They're always in your guidelines in your handbook. All right. And Stephanie from Iowa wants to know how are ties broken for objective tests? We by being online, the way it's we have it set up is um, the last ten questions. Let's say um, and we we have ties all the time. Believe me or not, we have ties in almost every test uh, on the objective test. And what what the what we have set up is the last ten. We look at the last ten questions first, and if there's still a tie on the number of corrected answers, then it goes back to the tie. But it's automatically broken since it is a computer-based system. Sounds good. And Lewis from Tennessee would like to know if he can bring a calculator for his financial concepts test. The difference between FBLA and PBL, we have a lot of financial, all, for all your accounting and finance and stats tests, you're allowed to bring a financial calculator. For all the other events, if a calculator is necessary, we have a cute little calculator sitting by your computer and or the program has a computer, but you may bring a finance calculator for what accounting professionals, accounting uh, analysis, uh, I want to say financial concepts, financial services, and business stats. Whatever the accounting, finance, and the stats test, you can bring a financial calculator. Sounds good. It looks like we have time for one more question. So if we run out of time and are unable to answer your question, you can always contact education at fbla.org. So for the last question, Lynn from Illinois wants to know if she has to bring her own equipment for her performance event. Again, the, we will provide for the ones that have allow equipment. We will have, if, if the event allows, we'll have internet access for you. We'll have a screen. We will provide an LCD projector. But be careful, if you're using a, a Macintosh Apple product, you're going to have to bring the connector with you because we don't have a connector. We're just only connecting to a PC. If you're using a mobile device of some sort and using that, it's not going to be able to connect. You're also able, if you want to, bring your own LCD, you know, your own uh, projector, but you are responsible for your computer, computer-related equipment to, to use. All right. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. So on behalf of this year's PBL National Officer Team, I would like to personally invite you to attend this year's National Leadership Conference, which will be held in Nashville, Tennessee. Also, don't forget that you can find all of the past webinars archived on our YouTube channel, as well as on the National Website Media Gallery. They're a great resource to include in your next chapter meeting. Thank you all for attending, and I hope you have a great week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in Nashville, Tennessee.